Shalom, it's Tahila from the Kifar. Welcome back. This is part two of my Zoom tips video to help you with your teaching and virtual classroom management. So let's get into it. Okay, another thing that you really, really want to learn how to do is how to manage your participants. So at the bottom of the Zoom screen, you'll have a menu with a number of options. When you click the Manage Participants button, that will show you on the side all of the students who are in your Zoom classroom. And this is very helpful, particularly if you have more than four students in your classroom, because here at the top, you can only see four videos at a time, four to five videos at a time, depending on how large your screen is. And if you have any more students than that, you'll have to manually keep scrolling back and forth in order to see them all. Whereas if you click the manage participants, all of the students will be listed here on the side. It'll also help you if you want to call on different students and not just focus on the ones that you can actually see. Um, so this is very helpful to keep open at all times throughout the session, just so that you're constantly aware of who it is that is in your class. Now, I generally like to let students manage their own microphones. Uh, if it's a larger class, I'll ask them to just keep it off, but they can turn it on uh, if they have to ask a question or if there's anything that they want to say. Sometimes that doesn't always work, uh, particularly in really large classes. Sometimes students' mics will be on and off and there'll be a whole lot of noise and it can be really hard to focus or to teach in that environment. And so if that happens under the same Manage Participants button, down here, you'll see an option to mute all. And if you click on that option, not only will you be able to mute all of the participants, but if you need to, you can uncheck this box, which means that participants will not be allowed to unmute themselves. So it will give you as the teacher complete control over all of the students' microphones. So generally, if there is a whole lot of noise, I will just mute all of the students at once and just explain, hey, there's a lot of background noise. I muted everyone, but if you need to say something, ask something, answer a question, feel free to unmute yourself. In the situation that students are having a hard time managing themselves and managing their own microphones, then you can uncheck this box. And then if you need to unmute a student's microphone, you can manually do so with the list of students that you have up at the top. Now, sometimes you'll find that you don't necessarily want to mute the entire class. You might have great discussions going on. You might not want to be bothered with having to unmute each individual student so that they can talk. You may only have one or two students that are very disruptive whose mics you need to mute. When you mute microphones individually using these controls up here, the student also can undo that. So you can mute the microphone and the student right away can turn it back on. So if you find yourself in a situation with a student or two that is just very disruptive and not responsive to redirection or anything like that, you can put them on hold. And you do that by going up to the student controls. And when you hover over the microphone, you'll get the option to mute and more. So when you click more, you'll have the opportunity to put the student on hold. And when you put a student on hold, it temporarily removes them from the meeting. So it sort of, it's like putting them on timeout. And when you do that here, you have up here in the same manage participants menu that the student is on hold and all of the remaining participants who are in the meeting. And whenever that time is up, whether it's two minutes, three minutes, whatever it is, all you do is you click the take off hold button and it returns the student into the room. So obviously that is a last resort, but it is also temporary. So it is different from just removing a student from the meeting that just kicks them out entirely and does not allow them to return. Putting them on hold is sort of just a timeout, take a breather, get yourself together, and then they can rejoin the classroom uh, when, the, when the teacher allows. Another thing that you will want to be mindful of and that you can use is the chat feature. And the chat feature is down at the bottom uh, along with your tools. And the chat also opens up on the side. As the teacher, you can send a message that will go to everyone, so all of the students. Or you can click on the everyone button and scroll down and select a specific student that you would like to message. And you'll notice that also on the side, there are these three dots. And what this menu allows you to do is it allows you to set permissions for your student. So you can have it where students are not allowed to chat. You can set it where students can chat with the host only, so that's you as the teacher. The students can send you a message if they would like. You can have it as everyone publicly, meaning that the students can chat with you as the teacher, or they can send a message to everyone. So everyone in the class will be able to see it. 
Or the final option, and this is the one that you have as the teacher, is that students can chat with everyone, including you, including the entire group, but they can do it also privately, which means that they can have one-on-one -on -one conversations with other students in the chat as well that you as the teacher will not see. Depending on, again, the group that you are working with, the age of your class, the rules of your district, you may want to set it to just host only, where students can communicate only with you or with everyone publicly so that you can see what's going on in the chat at all times. But again, it depends on your students and the rules of your school, and so that's a judgment call that you can make. I don't recommend turning the chat off entirely. In my experience, sometimes students who are shy uh, or don't want to ask questions on camera or they have a question but they know that it's a little bit off topic, they will send that in the chat. So it is a useful tool to have. And again, if students start writing too much or playing around with it, you can always change the settings in the middle of a session. So this is not something that once you set it, it has to be that way. You can change it at any time. So this is all for part two of the Zoom tips for classroom management. Uh, thank you for watching. If you missed part one, definitely check that out and make sure that you also watch part three. And if you have questions on anything in this video or on Zoom in general or other platforms and resources for teaching language online, let me know and um, I'll be happy to do some more videos and trainings on them. Okay, so until next time, lehita out. Bye.